Hi everybody, Grandma Bev here from Life with Grandma Bev. And as I say, I do all kinds of videos. Anything that I think will make interesting comment or comment com content, I do video on. Right, Rick? Rick is actually missing Trent. And if you don't know who Trent is, you need to go in and say, where is Trent the troll? <laughs> And watch my videos from when Trent was visiting us. But today, I got this box. <laughs> and when my daughter came down to visit me in Yuma, in the back of her trunk of her car, she had a bunch of books that she was just going to take and donate. So she says, Mom, do you want any of them? I'm not going to turn down free stuff, right? So I took a bunch. <laughs> And I'm going to share them with you. Now, you know I don't read much, but but you never know. And if I ever get eyeglasses that work right on me, I'll, I'll read more of it. I didn't know I taped it. <laughs> I had, you know, packed it up. I mean, that was in February. And then put it outside the motorhome in one of the storage compartments. Now this one I already did a book report on to you guys. And this one, and this one. Highly recommend all three of them. The Hor Horror Store, The Missing Sapphire Zangra Bar, and The Push. So those I did read. But I needed somewhere to pack them, so I just packed all the books in this one thing. So, let's see what I ended up getting. Okay, this one, A Dark Secret. I don't think this was from Michelle. This was uh, when she was visiting me up here in Washington last summer. <clears throat> <coughs> Excuse me. I took her to this cute little bookstore that had opened near me, and they had free books, and I grabbed this one. It's a... Uh, when prodigal daughter Heather Evans returns to her, her family home after her mother's baffling suicide, she makes an alarming discovery. Stacks and stacks of carefully preserved letters from notorious silver killer Michael Reeve, the Red Wolf, as he was dubbed by the press, had been in prison for over 20 years serving a life sentence for the gruesome and ritualistic murders of several women across the country. Although he has always protested innocence, his innocence. The police have had no reason to listen, yet Heather isn't the only one to have cause to re-examine the murders. The body of a young woman has just been found, dismembered and placed inside a tree. Oh. The corpse planted with flowers, just as the red wolf once did. What did Heather's mother know? Why did she kill herself? And with the monster's red wolf safely locked inside a maximum security prison, who is stalking young women now? So, uh, you know, it's not interesting. So it's a dark and secret place by Jen Williams. Let's see, let's put the, this right up here in the windowsill. Okay, The Dry by Jane Harper. The, uh, the rest of these should all be ones, I think, from... Uh, Michelle. <clears throat> Federal agent Aaron Falk isn't, hasn't been back to the place where he grew up in 20 years, not since he and his father were run out of town. Even when Falk gets word that his childhood best friend, Luke, is dead and his entire family murdered, Falk still isn't planning on going back. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> But then he gets a note. Luke lied. You lied. Be at the funeral. And just like that, Falk is swept back into the secrets of the place and people he left so long ago. You know, I, I find so many books that sound so interesting, and I just wish I could just get into them. I mean, I've got a book sitting next to me up there in the other room, and what do I do? I look at it and think, oh, no, I won't read right now. <laughs> and then a month goes by. <laughs> When Falk returns for the funeral amid the worst drought in a century, long buried mysteries resurface along with the lies that accompanied them. And Falk will discover anew what he's known all along. Sometimes you have to go back, 
home in order to finally leave your past behind. Oh, itchy nose. Sorry. <laughs> it's almost like I've got cat hair floating around. So, you know, this sounds really interesting. <laughs> if any of you have read any of these ones, let me know, too, so I can tell you. You can tell me what you think. Midnight at the Blackbird Cafe by Heather Weber. Nestled in the mountain shadows of Alabama lies the little town of Wicklow. It is here that Anna Kate has returned to bury her beloved Granny Z, the owner of the Blackbird Cafe. It was supposed to be a quick trip to close the cafe and settle her grandmother's estate, but despite her best intentions to avoid farming ties or even getting to know her father's side of the family, Anna Kate finds herself inexplicably drawn to the quirky southern town her mother ran away from so many years ago and the mysterious blackbird pie everybody can't stop talking about it. As the truth about her past slowly becomes clear, Anna Kate will need to decide if this lone blackbird will finally be able to take her broken wings and fly. It almost sounds like a uh, Hallmark movie, <laughs> you know, story, doesn't it though? Let's see. The mother-in-law. Everyone in this family is hiding something. <laughs> it's by Sally Hepworth. <clears throat> I might have read this. I don't know. <laughs> if I got it sitting over. Of course, usually as I read them, I take them right down to my, my thrift store. From the moment Lucy met her husband's mother, she knew she, she wasn't the wife Diana had envisioned for her perfect son. Exquisitely polite, friendly, and always generous, Diana nonetheless kept Lucy at arm's length despite her desperate attempts to win her over. And because she was a pillar in the community, an advocate for female refugees, it is sounding familiar, and a woman happily married for decades, no one had a bad word to say about Diana except Lucy, not my Lucy. That was five years ago. Now Diana is dead. A suicide note found near her body claiming that she had no longer wanted to live because of the cancer wrecking havoc inside her. But the autopsy finds no cancer. It does find traces of poison and evidence of suffocation. Who could possibly want Diana dead? Why was her will changed at the 11th hour to disinherit both of her children and their spouses? And what does it mean that Lucy isn't exactly sad she's gone? <laughs> I can associate with that one. <laughs> Not Bob's mother. <laughs> A previous mother-in-law. Fractured relationships and deep family secrets go more compelling with every page in this twisty, captivating novel from Sally Hepworth. Well, you know, it sounds so familiar. <laughs> I think I read it. That's another one of my talents. I read a book and I don't remember what what it was about. <laughs> Here is The Flood Girls, a novel by Richard Feifold. Feifold? Feifold. It looks like a trailer in the front. It says, <clears throat> if I do it this way, I can see it better. <clears throat> like an old lady or an old man. Welcome to Rosh's, Rakus, Rosh's, Quinn, Montana, population 956, a town where nearly all the volunteer firemen are named Jim, where the dirty shame, the filthy of the two bars in town, refuses to serve mixed drinks and where the locals hate the newcomers. Then again, they hate the locals too. Rachel Flood has returned to town after leaving behind a trail of chaos, hoping to make amends with her mother's group of spit fire-wielding, brazen women, and with the help of the world's most fabulous 12-year-old, she just might make things right. With the caustic wit of Where'd You Go? So that must be another book that he's written. Bernadette, oh, another book, <laughs> and in the spirit of A League of Their Own, Richard Fifield's sardonic, courageous, and heartwarming debut will leave you laughing through tears. Sounds like another good one. The House on Harbor Hill by Shelley Stratton. <clears throat> <laughs> 
She's generous, kind, and compassionate, yet Delilah Gray will forever be an outcast in the small seaside town of Camden Beach, Maryland. She takes in women shattered by abuse, poverty, illness, or events beyond their control. But no matter how far she's come or how many she's helped find their way back, there is no safe place for Delilah. Acquitted of her rich husband's mysterious death decades ago, she lives in her beautiful mansion consumed by secrets and mistakes she feels she can never atone for until she takes in desperate mother Tracy Walters and her two young children. Tracy won't say where she's from or what sent her into hiding, but her determination and refusal to give up reminds Delilah of the spirited, hopeful girl she once was and the dreams she still cherishes. As Tracy takes tentative steps to rebuild her life, her unexpected attraction to Delilah's handsome, troubled caretaker inadvertently brings Delilah face to face with the past. And when Tracy's worst fears come brutally calling, both women must find even more strength to confront truths they can no longer ignore and at least learn how to truly be free. That sounds good, too. <laughs> Again, if any of you have read any of these, let me know. And let's see, I've got two more. These are smaller ones. This is by Sue Miller. It's called The World Below. In this one, it's a beautiful, wistful meditation on the concept of home, touching but never sentimental. New England 1919, 19 year old Georgia Rice, who has cared for her father and two siblings ever since her mother's death, is diagnosed with consumption and sent away to a sanitarium. Freed from the burdens of running a household, she discovers a nearly lost world of youth and possibility and a doomed romance. And it says, the present. Catherine Hubbard, George's granddaughter, no longer feels any attachment to her life in San Francisco. So when George's old Vermont house is passed down to her, Kath seizes the chance to return to the simple comfort of her childhood home. There she stumbles upon George's diaries. Through them, Kath comes to understand the complex world of love and betrayal that existed below the serene marriage she'd seen and the misunderstanding upon which Georgia built a lifelong love. And the last one, it's The Gingerbread Man by Maya Corrigan. This might be a good one to read around Christmas time. Like, I'll get around to it. <laughs> this one, it says, This holiday season, Bayport, Maryland, I was born in Bayport, New York, is a dead ringer for Victorian London. Val and her grandfather are taking part in the Dickens of a Holiday Festival. Val is hosting a private tea party serving the festival's costume volunteers who range from Dickens divas like Madame Defarge and Miss Habersham to Ebenezer Scrooge and old Saint Nick himself. But one costume reveler may have gotten the holidays mixed up. The winner of the creepiest outfit, robed in black with a gift bag covering the head, says, okay. <laughs> Ghost of Christmas present, Val gets it Val gets it hands out gingerbread man. What? Val gets it hands out gingerbread man with white icing skeleton bones. This year, Sour Santa has none of the big fellow's mirth but plenty of his appetite. And it's no secret, Santa loves cookies. Oh man, after my own heart. <laughs> But when the man in red turns blue, Val and Granddad have a cookie cutter killer to catch before the new year. This also includes delicious five ingredient recipes. <laughs> so that'll do it. What do you guys think? You think I'll ever read any of them? If I do, I'll do a book report on them. In fact, I've got one I've recorded shortly after I got home from Yuma, a book report that I haven't posted yet. <laughs> So comment below. Remember, tell me if you've read any of these. Share, like, subscribe. And I hope you're all having a terrific day, week, month. <laughs> I love you all. Bye.